Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get our seats and get started. We are officially live. If you have not had a chance to check in on the app yet, please do so. That would be fabulous. We have a great day today. Presenter all the way from the Netherlands. For those of you that are new, let me give you a little bit of background about One Million Cups. So One Million Cups is a nonprofit part of the Kauffman Foundation. It's a national organization. They have over 160 chapters across the country. And every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. in whatever time zone you're in, they have a business owner present their challenge and get feedback from the audience. So that's why we're called One Million Cups, because over One Million Cups of Coffee, we help businesses grow. As we think about giving feedback today, so what will happen to give you a little bit of a sense of the agenda, <clears throat> we'll have our presenter uh, talk for six to 10 minutes, then we'll pause, Donnell is gonna moderate, and as you raise your hand, we'll call on you to ask your questions. You have index cards in front of you. If you haven't had a chance to ask your question, or even if you do, please dot down your feedback. <clears throat> and if you wanna include your name, number, email, for the presenter, we do give these cards uh, to our presenter at the end of the session. Parking passes, just for logistics. If you have parked and you haven't got a pass, I recommend you use one, uh, just to make sure you're safe and don't get towed, although you should be fine. Um, let's see what else. Do follow us online. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, if you wanna post events or things like that, feel free to put them on our group pages on LinkedIn or our Facebook. We can't do this without our organizers. So if I could have all of the makeup organizers come on up. This is a volunteer job. We all just love small businesses so much. And we do this every Wednesday because we want to help businesses grow. You want to start us off? Sean Riedenberg, cccsolutions.com. Donnie O'Johns, Vision Worldwide. Jen Dalton, Brand Mirror. Russ McIntosh, Vision Idea Design. Uh, Tony Bonnet, Engel Resources. John Yu with Office Evolution. I have Shemendis with the TSIN. We have a child guest in for me tonight. Woohoo! Thank you, organizers. Right. I had somebody mention you have a nice orange name tag, and I said yes, I do, and you can have one too if you would like to be an organizer. <laughs> so if you're interested in learning about how to be an organizer, please talk with us uh, one of us after the meeting. We would love to have you. The other folks we could not do this without um, are sponsors. So, John Rutenberg, would you come on up? He's our coffee sponsor for the month. Yeah. All that means is he's provided coffee, which is a big deal. <laughs> but if you're interested in being a coffee sponsor, let us know. John. So, it's great being a coffee sponsor. And this uh, month of October, there are five Wednesdays. So, <laughs> was, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. When, in fact, truth be told, it was supposed to be in September, and someone else wanted September, and John said, hey, will you do October? I said, sure. I can yeah. see when you do good things for other people, you get rewarded. It's an important <laughs> message, and therefore, I became a coffee sponsor. So that, at the time that we had a conversation about this month has five Wednesdays, that has nothing to do with this? Man, I don't even remember that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like the guy who said, yeah, I don't think it was that way. <laughs> But anyway, uh, cccsolutions.com helps business owners who suffer from follow-up fatigue. If you have FUF, perhaps business cards filling up, piling up on your desk, or spreadsheets with additional columns of notes, but yet you can't follow up with all the contacts you make at networking, CCC Solutions helps business owners and sales professionals overcome follow-up fatigue with drip email campaigns, with dynamic email lists, all automating the touches that you can't possibly make alone. I'm glad that I'm the sponsor of uh, uh, One Million Cups. It's a fabulous group of volunteers I really sponsored coffee this month because we need the people in the audience to contribute. And coffee sponsors a layup, guys. It's a very simple thing to do. So if you speak with any of the sponsors, we'll be happy to help. I'm honored, I'm humbled that I had the opportunity, and I love the fact that we have one million cups, and that's what coffee sponsorship is all about. So thank you very much. <laughs> John. 
Brandy did a great job while you were out. Just thank saying. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sylvia from Office Evolution is our space sponsor. So Office Evolution is just across the hall, and they make this spot available every week, which we are very thankful for. So <laughs> you can do my speech. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Sylvia Ferguson, and I'm with Office Evolution. I'm the new business center manager. So um, if you're looking for office space, you should come to me. I will give you a tour. Um, we have shared offices, virtual, virtual, which is business addresses, and private offices. So yeah, come and see. Before we get started with our presenter, so we're going to just do name and company. Do introductions so everybody knows who's in the room. We're going to start over here. Would you start us off? Good morning. My name is Mark Evans, and I am the founder of ShareTech Solutions. John Rickenberg, cccsolutions.com. Randy Malkin, and I'm working with the audience. John Lippitz, Fish and Explore. John Foster, Ambassador for Green Fair Organic Cafe. Amara DeCure, founder of Paragon Education Consulting. Uh, Tony Barnett with uh, End Goal uh, Solutions. It's always fun to see how this works when you stand in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, Tiffany Jose, Build Data Analytics. I'm Luke, CEO of Tenzin, excited to list to listen to Nick's story. <laughs> and Nick Jansen of Tenzin. I'll get back. Michael O'Hanlon, RM O'Hanlon Consulting, uh, counting small business, GovCon, and fraud. Russ McIntosh, Vision Idea Design. We're an all inclusive graphic design firm in Fairfax City. Alan Anderson, I help small businesses with their sales. Welcome back over here. Maya Schumann is the chief center. Billy Gong. Um, financial advisor with Edward Jones. Sharon Levan, Clara Strategies. Jeff Englander, Zona Systems Operations Cybersecurity. John, you, I guess I'm number four, so John, I just kind of like But I'll just have a Executive advisors, uh, we uh, help people become magicians. I'm Sylvia Ferguson with Office of Innovation. Uh, Lucia here, and I'm, I'm in a tech business kind of thing. We're starting up. Got it. I think. I think we're going to go home and watch Concierge when you watch and keep an eye on home so we can go far away. Okay. Jennifer Richmond, Shad, Aromatic Coffee Cups. Sean Price, Sterling Brook uh, Co., and also Price and Price yes. Coasters. Welcome, we're excited to have you next year. Thank you. I'm kind of your class. So, no pressure for Nick. Nick has to make sure that you don't intimidate Sterling over next week yes. so that he feels good about presenting. So, not only do you have to do a good presentation, you have to make it look easy so that it looks easy for next week. So, just to be clear for anybody who is starting a business and you want to present, we do work with you on your presentation and preparing, so we do help you through the process. I'm very excited to have Nick speak to us about sensing all the way from Netherlands, came here to visit and speak to us, so please, come on up. So yeah, as was mentioned, I come from the Netherlands, although I'm locally too here. Um, actually, Martin and I kind of traded places because Martin is from the Netherlands and I'm from here, so we just decided to swap. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Today I'm going to talk about geographic language processing, or GLP for short. And actually, this was an idea I had, and Martin decided at our company, let's have an idea contest and uh, see what you guys got. And so I presented this, and luckily it won. And so I've been working on this project, and I've been talking with Martin a lot about, okay, how do we bring this to be, you know, some sort of product that we can sell? that we can help our customers with. And lots of uh, long range telephone calls. He said, you know what? You need to come to One Million Cups and uh, present this because you can get some really good feedback. So I'm excited to be here. Um, so who is Tenzing? We are a geographic information system for GIS consultancy. And that is pretty much the technology that powers Google Maps or wayfinding applications or tracking of assets. And specifically, we are a partner with Esri, who's right next door. They make GIS software. 
And then additionally, we're a partner with FME, or excuse me, Safe Software, and they make a particular piece of software called FME that does a lot of ETL functions for you. So it's, that is extract, transform, and load, if I remember correctly. Um, and of course, we are headquartered in the Netherlands, but we are looking and we work a lot with uh, other European countries other than the Netherlands, but we're looking to expand more here in the US. On to GLP or geographic language processing. What is this? So you can think of it, it has two different parts to it. One part is the GIS part, that technology that powers maps, and the other part is something called natural language processing or NLP. Now, this is a technology that powers Siri and Alexa. Um, anytime that you're talking with a machine using your voice, or texting, um, this is using NLP. Now, if you think about it, if you use your phone, you can say, all right, get me to one million cups, or get me to the nearest gas station. Um, but what about asking questions of your own data, your own spatial data? Tell me, how many pipes are in the ground in this construction area? Or what dog parks are near my house? Good luck asking Siri, it won't, it won't do it for you. And so we want to enable our customers to have non-GIS specialists talk with their data, <coughs> ask questions of their data. Now, what does this look like? I have a screenshot here, I'll kind of stand out of the way. Um, this map here is something that Esri provides. It's from the ArcGIS Enterprise system. And you can put your own data in there, your own spatial data, and it shows it on the map. And so what we have done is we have created a widget that sits in there. And this widget communicates with this GLP backend. And all it is is a chat box. You can have a conversation just right here with your data. So here, as you can see, there's this uh, kind of construction area. And you can see in the conversation, Somebody said, okay, I'm interested in PWA-1, and the map highlighted it. And then it says, okay, here is PWA-1. Um, what else do you want to know? We provide some buttons, you know, that help guide the user, and they can type in and find out more information about this project working area. Now, this is just one example. We want to target um, utilities, as you can see in this example, but we also want to target local governments as well or any other entity that has spatial information that they want to get to non-specialists. Um, I like to use the example of, think of your mom or your grandma, you know, how do you get them to be able to find answers to their questions? It should make it that easy here. So what is our pricing and product plan? What would we expect to do with this? So we are offering the platform for $2,500 a year back-end system. But of course, this involves machine learning, so there's a lot of training that needs to go into this. So what we have said is for a story, um, we charge $250 per question. Now you can think of a question as a, you know, show me a project working area. Um, the thought may come back and say, do you want to know anything else? Uh, yes or no, that's a, another question um, or a response. So you can think of most stories take about uh, 20 questions to have a really good story. So we take, we do my math right, about 5,000 to do a, a small story. And then that GLP assistant, the <coughs> widget I showed you there, we offer that for free. So we allow people to go download it, bring it into their Esri enterprise system, and look at a sample story. And they can see how easy it is to just put it in their system and the power of it. Now, our product launch plan, and this kind of leads to my challenge question. <clears throat> um, for the past month or two, we've been doing lots of mailings, uh, social media posts, reaching out to existing customers. Um, additionally, we went to a conference in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and we kind of showed this to folks. We've been drumming up a lot of support, all for a November 1st release. 
where we are going to do two webinars, one in Dutch and one in English. And we roll this out and say, okay, everybody, here's the download link. Go try it out if you're interested. Or we'll contact you and see if you're interested. Um, and then next week, we're actually going to Atlanta and presenting at a utility conference of Esri, that GIS software company, to uh, broaden our uh, customer base here in the US. So my challenge question, why I came here all the way from the Netherlands, <laughs> I want to ask you guys, is what should we be doing to have a successful product launch? What do we need? Thank you all very much. Okay. All right. Let's give him a round of applause one more time. Yeah. I think I'm going to need some virtual machine learning this morning. I'm a little tired, but we're going to, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first and foremost, uh, everybody has a card in front of you. It's either three by five, five by seven, six by whatever. Use that card, put your first name on there, your email address, and your phone number. You're going to use that piece of paper to jot down any questions or any feedback that you want to give them. Also, make sure that your feedback is thought-provoking, nice, kind, and something that they can use where they can receive it. Uh, lastly, I want to make sure that uh, if you haven't checked in uh, on the app, please check in. I'm not going to uh, look and count and point you out, but I do have somebody that's willing to do that. <laughs> I promise. Who I'm is that? <laughs> I'm not going to say Tony, but. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Who has the first question? Yeah. Two, two, two things. I think you really need to wow. This is interesting, but most people probably don't get it. And then, so you really need to wow your audience. Okay. And what's that commercial is? The guy says, in Dutch, I need a hug, and he meant to say <laughs> You need to be clear on that. Okay. Hi. Um, going back to your your pricing. Uh, yes. And, and, I, and okay. So, is your platform is that I'm 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 a bit confused as your 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 target market. I saw your target market it now is the pricing to a utility, and then and then they expand upon that. I mean, as far as it, or is it to a individual or individual department within a utility. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Are you looking yeah, at the, they're the like low, the, right, the organizational, yeah. or are you looking at, hey, you know, here's here's uh, you know power and light, but I'm only wanting to, I only want to go after their maintenance, or I only want to go after their install. <laughs> yeah. So what we are targeting is an organization because we we kind of pair it up with the way. Esri is deploying their ArcGIS enterprise. They usually do it per organization, mm -hmm. and so this would sit right next to it. Um, so we usually go organization. There are some organizations that will have multiple enterprise. Um, it's a little bit more rare, but then in that regards, we would do, okay, multiple GLPs. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Jen Dalton, Brand Mirror. I think the, the big question I would have is what's at stake? So what's at stake for people who don't have access to this? And if they did have access to it, what are five to 10 examples of, here's how they can be more productive. Here's how they can learn more quickly or get up to speed or save time. Um, so as you think about what you need, I would create three to five almost case studies or situations where this really changes how people work but without a really clear problem statement and an example of you can now do this, right? By using this platform, we have transformed your work capability to be X, Y, Z. So making it as crystal clear as to exactly who you help and how, I think would be a great piece of marketing collateral to have at your conference or video, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Hi. No, you're good. Okay, all right, um, I guess I'm, I'm in charge of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, for now. <laughs> I'll take Jen Scoop, Tiffany Jose, Bill Bay Analytics. Um, I have several questions. Um, first, how much money do you save from using this? Secondly, are you married only to those companies that utilize the Esri software platform? 
And third, is there a plan to have an API so that it can be integrated with other organizations that use other platforms? Okay. Not one more <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think three might be my limit <laughs> to remember. Okay. So the first one was, um, if I remember correctly, how do you save money? How do you save money? So the money saving in this is the time of GIS specialists to answer these questions. Uh, what we often see with our consultants um, is they go to an organization, they're managing the GIS system, and then they start getting those one-off emails of, hey, you know, can you tell me how many pipes are here? Or, hey, if we were to build a structure here, um, how would that impact this particular feature? And so we get a lot of these one-off questions. Now, for a resource to sit there and spin up and look at the question, do an analysis, and then return back, and then do any follow-up, um, that's where the money savings would be with this. It's kind of self-service. Can I get feedback, or I just... No, go ahead. I can. Okay. <laughs> Please. Um, so based on my experience, um, it becomes more of an impactful presentation for a launch if you can actually quantify that okay. in percentage of time or or dollars that associate with that. Anecdotal stories are great, but if you could back it up with, with more research around that, that would be... That, that helps tell the story a lot more more impactfully. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I forgot the other two questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. API be married to and Esri. system yeah. yeah. Do you have to be married to Esri, this okay. GIS platform? As of right now with the product, yes. But we have been talking with some local governments in the Netherlands who don't have Esri. And so we are making plans to look at other GIS solutions that we could do this with. The one thing that kind of helps us is Esri, especially here in the United States, the majority of people who have GIS are using Esri. They are a large market share. Um, I would say in my experience, I've seen it about 90% of organizations in the United States. Netherlands is a little bit less, maybe 60%. So that's why we targeted the Esri platform right now, but we do have those plans to get to other platforms. Thanks. Sherilyn Laban, Clark Strategies. So to follow up what Jen said, tell me your name again. Tiffany. What Tiffany said. So here's what I'm looking for. Where's the urgency, right? So Jen says, um, what's at stake? What's at stake? You know, give us some case studies. Tiffany is asking you, you know, how do you quantify this? So my question is, I want to know, what happens if I'm not using your product? Mm -hmm. What are the top three things that will happen that kind of fall through the cracks if I don't use your product? So it's that sense of, I think before you do your launch, people need to understand, so why do I need to use, why do I need this? I'm all the noise of things I need to think about. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to use this product? What's the big deal? Okay. Um, I was confused from the start. Uh, it was GLP, Geographic Language Processing. Processing. And I was thinking this would probably be some app that you could put on your phone <laughs> or something for travel or something like traveling to the Netherlands and holding the thing up and seeing Dutch and English or something like that. Um, and then finding out that GLP and NLP and all this sort of stuff, this is completely new to me. Um, in your presentation, to identify what those are and what they aren't. This is not a travel document, travel app or something like that. Uh, and then the other thing is all of your acronyms, spell them out. I don't know what it is. I've never heard of Esri. I don't know what it is. Um, and so I really bring us into where your field is, because I'm sitting here disappointed that I can't read Dutch signs now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I can't either, neither. So. Right, but, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's that sort yeah. of thing, and understanding that the use of geographic language does not pertain to travel. And um, will it apply to, like Russ does graphic art, can, if he were to get it, would he be able to use this to find places that need graphic arts, or you, how would it apply to graphic arts? 
or to sales or to uh, how, how is it applicable to other things other than utilities? Mm -hmm. okay. So they explain more of what it doesn't do, but what it can do. Yeah, and, okay. and then the real question to, to answer is, what does this, what does this do more than utilities? I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this only utility based? So we are focusing on utilities and local government as well. Anywhere where there are non-GIS, non-geographic information system specialists. If you want to know a question about something that is on the map. Yeah. Thank you. Russ, did you have a question? So, uh, <laughs> so my question is twofold. Um, I see a ton of places where this could go. Are you planning on doing a partner in a system integration um, profile or portfolio? So this is quite new, and I think this That's leads into your question. question. Yeah, with your question, um, we first off are just kind of putting out into the market, and we're leaving it a little bit vague of where we can go. And I think if there is a want or a need. To do yeah an API platform integration, of course. And that was my 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 uh, my big thought was if you wanted to scale fairly easily, if you had an SDK and you set up a partner portal, you could train these partners and then they would go out and scale this for you a lot easier. Interesting. I don't know what the heck they just said, but <laughs> 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 Um, so, two, two, one comment, one question. Um, the comment is actually, you said, what do we have to do to have a successful product launch? Yes. Um, so my comment is document for the team what successful means, because that will drive your task to completion, right? Does that mean that you get X number of inquiries, Y number of sales, X amount of press <coughs> coverage, whatever that is? And then kind of my question associated to that is um, a lot of the organizations you talked about have pretty long sales cycles. Do you have a marquee customer, someone that shortcuts that trust cycle that you'll have to build up with bigger organizations? Because you know, no one ever got fired for buying IBM kind of thing in, in the new modern world. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you do lead with that, if you don't try really hard to get somebody before that, because that's really going to bring a lot of, um, I, it, it brings a lot of trust to the conversation. Yes. Um, the, so if I understand your question correctly, the, the two things that we're really focusing on to build that trust with the client <laughs> is, first off, um, we have this that works within Esri. So most of these customers have Esri. They want the most value out of that product. And we are adding more value into there. And then additionally, we're bringing in more people to use that. Um, so we're relying on that kind of trusted name. Hey, it's just a widget that goes in there. And you can use more. Uh, the second part, um, I believe, is in the Netherlands, at least, we have lots of consultants that sit at these organizations that we are going to target. These consultants, some of them have been there for nine years, and they're trusted voices when it comes to GIS. And so we can say, hey, these people that you already trust, and that you know, we have this relationship, we now have a product. Um, I, I don't know if that kind of goes with your uh, your concern you raised, or if I'm missing something. No, no, that's a good approach. If you haven't signed up like uh, Power and Light or GCP and L, whatever it happens to be, if you haven't already got those marquees having a trusted partner coming in. I also really like the SDK idea. <laughs> um, two thoughts. One is when I've worked with companies who are thinking about their reputation, one of the things they do well is when they launch a new product, they don't go to the market. They go to their clients first. Mm -hmm. They get first dips. They get to try it first because it's innovation and you're bringing it to them first. And because they're a client, they get to be first, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I would have a roadmap of your, your beta, right? You are invitation only to your top 10 clients or people can opt in, but like there's make it um, interesting, mm -hmm. right? Create demand, limit the supply, 
mm -hmm. uh, ability for people to test it. Uh, I think second, it, it sounds like, I'm gonna play it back to you. Processing data is expensive. Do not waste your resources on questions that are low value. This is a self-service tool where people can ask questions and um, you can really leverage your data processing that is expensive on high value questions. But I think what are those 10 questions? What are 20 examples? What's a story? That was a little bit confusing for me. So I would go back and think about, is a story a project set of questions? What does that look like? Okay. So I apologize. I probably should have tried to be the first person to ask this. Uh, as having a son who has just recently graduated from GIS, I actually know a lot about what you do and what GIS is and its operations. Speak in English. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So one of the things I wanted to say was that, you know, that, that most people don't have an idea of just how impactful what you're doing is to overall industry. Uh, and that's why I wanted to sit there and just step up real quick and say that you impact the insurance industry, uh, the manufacturing industry. Real estate people don't even have an idea of just how much it's used in real estate construction, you've already mentioned, with utilities but also in localities mapping out and understanding where things are in their community, where the houses are, where the roads are, mm -hmm. where the you know, where the drainage pipes are. And what my son, when I showed him this mm -hmm. you know, this past weekend and, uh, that you were presenting, mm -hmm. all right, here's the cool factor. Right now, he's doing shipping and logistics. For them to sit there and find stuff out, they currently have to type in look into the area, they have to map out and they have to identify each location and manually sit there and identify each asset. He said, this is cool because just like Siri, I just asked how many of this are in this, in this geographic location and it tells you. And he said, that is cool because having just graduated, no one else is doing that. He knows how to use Esri's uh, platform, the ArcGIS platform. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, that makes it so much easier and saves so much time. So from that perspective, maybe what you do is you, ha is you have some of the people who are in GIS who are sitting there in, in a testimonial video mm -hmm. talking about how much this saves because that will then, to the community, click with the community who already are using it and know what they have to go through to find their information, their data. Where this, you just sit there and type in a simple question and it gives you back what, what the data you need. Mm -hmm. Excellent, that's, that's a really good idea, yeah. thank you. My name is Amara, I'm with Paragon Education Consulting, nothing to do with technology, all right? So I'm listening to the way you're presenting it and it sounds like, and as I hear from my colleagues, your, your pitch is that this will save time because it will alleviate the back and forth that a person would do with a non-GIS specialist. I'm thinking, because you're dealing with utilities, the urgency that you're trying to create may come at the time of a natural disaster, an emergency, at which time many local players who are non-GIS specialists need this data. Fire and rescue, police, first responders, construction, the emergency utility people. At that point, time is money and time is lives, right? That's where I think that you could have that unique pitch of if you don't do this, lives could be lost. If you don't do this, time is going to be extremely valuable and meaningful. That might catch the attention of people to say, oh, I get it. The utility market, from my perspective, is just paying my water bill and my gas bill, electric bill, seems slow and dull and boring. Yes. <laughs> but when it gets to an emergency, everybody probably sits up and panics because that's not the way their operations usually work. You would be able to come in and allow all these people at the same time to get information. Mm. That's really interesting. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. My question would be uh, with some of the kids, I know nothing about them. them. Um, I'm guessing that uh, their salespeople or whoever their partners you talk uh, would be a good contact for who do I contact? Have you contacted them at all? Yeah. You, you, so, you, well, the, one of the pieces of that question is I'm guessing that they probably have annual meetings with, the, with their partners or people they deal with. And uh, I remember when it's a company I worked with, I sold a lot of stuff going at that annual meeting and uh, presenting the technology there. Yeah, so we have been talking with Esri Netherlands. We're very tight with them. Um, we presented at, or excuse me, we had a booth at their um, big conference uh, in September in Netherlands. And 
then um, we're also going to next week, This it's an Esri conference, this utility conference. And we also want to go to their annual conference. At least I want to go. I haven't talked to Martin yet, so, uh, so surprise, <laughs> there we go. We got it. Are you talking to your sales team? I have not. Okay. To refer to you to people that need it, or would it be useful? I have not talked with their salespeople, and I think that's what we need to do next. We're, we're talking with their technical people, but maybe, yeah, we need to talk to the sales guys. Good idea. Dan? Hi, uh, Dan with the Home Watch Crunch here. I, I, uh, I'm assuming that you talk to people that don't understand the acronyms and whatnot, so probably this is a very first audience. So you probably don't know, your, your audience will know what you're talking about. But as the gentleman said over there, it's, it's I would just like to understand the problem solved. How things are better and how what you do replaces current <coughs> systems where they I'm assuming once they build the building they know they have maps of where uh, until the next me gave you some information where the where the numbers are and things like that. So how do you do and I think this is, makes it simple and, and boys old minutia is how what you do, what problem do you solve and how do you make things better than that, that, yeah. that's there that's the you go. Yeah. That's, a, that's it. Actually <laughs> government would be very amazing. As the lady said over there, the government would have a nice use of this data mm -hmm. rather than any personal individuals. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and I will add too that uh, I think the disaster thing is good, but yeah. no one, no disaster is going to use anything that's not incorporated because they don't want to be in the six o'clock news saying, yeah, we tried something new and it's not going to work. Of course. Work, right? so, of course. But I, I think those are people that you need to focus on it as well. Okay. I'm just curious. So you've been to a couple of conferences already, um, uh, and the, mm -hmm. some of the talk shows you've given are potential customers. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback are you getting from them? And then, if you're getting feedback from them, how have you changed, or how do you plan to change going forward? Yeah. So we've been to one conference so far in the Netherlands, and we found those who approached us the most were local governments, um, and a few utilities, and a few academics who were kind of interested in what we were doing, you know, what the buzz is. And also a few Ezra folks, seeing what's going on. Um, and from the utility folks and a few transportation folks, they were kind of just more absorbing it, thinking about it. But the local government folks, we were getting more feedback of, okay, I see the widget there um, in the ArcGIS maps. It'd be cool to put it on our front page. Like, can we take that widget and put it on our website? Um, or so that was one thing they said. And the other thing they said was, oh, we don't use Esri. Uh, we use some open source stuff. So what we are trying to do right now is we're still focusing on the Esri, but we're trying to drum up some interest in local governments. There's one particular uh, government agency in um, city out in the Netherlands who was really interested and we approached them and said hey let's do a partnership where we try out not doing it in Esri but doing it in this open source GIS and see what we can do and maybe put it on your front page so I guess to sum up we haven't changed we're still focusing on the two focus groups but we are um, trying to make some partnerships to try out some new stuff that they want John Rickenberg, CCC Solutions. Um, I think that uh, you need to launch differently than the connotation of the word launch. Right. I think that launching to Esri and firming up a partnership and finding the second, third, and fourth leading GPS is a tremendous way to scale and protect you from Esri stealing your idea and building it inside, which may be a very great risk and exposure point. Mm -hmm. And so diversifying, if you will, to other GPS. So the, the example you just gave relating to the open source product, rather than sell to the individual utilities and localities, which are ultimate end users, mm -hmm. partnering with the GPS organizations that represent the largest set of local governments and or real estate industry or and or utilities mm -hmm. is a great way to leverage those connections as opposed to launch to a mass audience of utilities worldwide. Mm -hmm. 
And so I would narrowly go after the leading five GPS systems and taking all of the statements made earlier about case studies, if you have five clients now using it through Eshery, yeah. man, promote that. And FEMA, through all of the state emergency management agencies, can be a great target yeah. for you. And whoever is their GPS vendor is the target for you to partner with to reach them. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. Can we go back to your business model? Yes. I mean, your, your cash model. Yeah, we make money. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark's got it. Okay. Yep. Sort of. <laughs> All right. So, story development $250 a question. So, if I am an organization and I have a, a question of how, you know, the question is very generic, like how many, um, how many, um, pipes or underground pipes are located in a, is it for a particular spatial area, each each space is $250, or is just the question of how many pipes, and no matter what the data is in terms of location or building or any of that, is that how the pricing goes? That's, that's the part that's not clear. Yes, mm. understood. Um, so it's that second uh, way that you're describing it. So, Put aside the, the spatial and the data, just think of, so if you think of that widget and that back and forth, you can kind of think about it as two coworkers that are talking to each other. If there's me and somebody else, and I say, hey, can you tell me um, where is this area? And they tell me back, oh, it's right here. And that's kind of a one question and response. So that would be $250. That can be very expensive, right? It can. So. Right. As I mentioned at 20 questions, so this uh, particular example that we were showing folks um, is about 20 questions and it comes up to about 5,000. Hmm. But you can imagine if someone really wanted to use it for building structures or um, an area and there's one question, the only, that one question is the variable that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the, spati the spatial aspect of it. Yes. That's what you have to think through and communicate to the buyer because if I'm if I'm on the other end, I'm thinking, oh my God, that's that's gonna be too much money. Yes. Depending, you know, yes. depending yeah. on our need. Yeah. I think we too. I think it depends on the buyer. Um, so one user, uh, one organization that we we're working with when we were coming up with this idea was a water utility in Amsterdam, and you know we said. Okay, we think we can do it for about this amount, you know, the prices I was telling you. And he said, okay, yeah, just send it to me and I'll sign it. So these utilities, local governments, you know, the amount we're talking about, if it's one story plus the uh, 250 a year, um, you know, comes out to less than $10,000. These folks didn't seem to think twice about it. No, for a small organization, no, I'm not thinking small. I'm yeah. thinking big, and I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the the infinite number of questions that can be asked. That's a single question. It's just dependent on the space. Um, that that's the, the, the variable. Yes. So it feels it feels that that's that's something to consider though. If if you've had a different reaction from organizations, but you may have a reaction like I'm having, like that's way too expensive. Yeah. A proposition. Yeah. Thank you. Um, two thoughts. One is, I think when people do a product launch, we're very excited about the product. You're like, let's go. Oh, yeah. And then what you haven't necessarily thought about is what's the innovation roadmap, the product development? What does this look like to really paint a compelling vision of where you're going? So that's one. Uh, before you do a launch, I would think about how are you going to maintain it maintain customer engagement, maintain innovation, prioritize ideas, et cetera. The second is for pricing. I think it's important to have a tiered pricing based on teams, based on the types of questions. So for example, if you could have the 20 questions a CEO can ask about the business or the project, all of a sudden like that you're, the CEO might be like, yeah, I want to know like how much did we do? Or the risk officer, tell me where we have risk in this 
spatial area, maybe pipes aren't protected, whatever. But I would think through those scenarios and what's all of the data you have access to and what could you really do that's interesting um, that would meet the needs of senior people, not just junior people, because if senior people can ask questions, they'll be much more likely to buy in and adopt. And if I can respond to your first uh, question or comment that you brought up, um, I did not include it here in the pricing, the, uh, the, the roadmap, um, where we're going, um, and the support in there. So we do offer support there. We have, you know, if you just want installation support, you know, we have a number there at 1500. Gotcha. And then we also have a yearly maintenance um, who wants to come in, help out. Um, I, I can't remember the number. And then um, we also, in the proposal that we hand out to people and they're ready to sign, we do a roadmap as well. So we talk about, we're gonna go towards voice rather than just typing. Uh, we're gonna go more towards mobile as well. And then also the, the open GIS systems as well. So I failed to put those in my slides. Thank you. So be brief, because I know we're running at the end here. You need to create the adopters to create the demand. So market this to the education, to the universities that are doing GIS training and have GIS degree programs, because once those students get used to something and start using it, when they go out in the field, they start getting hired. What they're going to do is they're going to be in a situation where they don't have something and they're going to then tell their employer, hey, you know that this is here. I learned this at school. Why aren't you using it? Yeah. That creates the internal demand that then starts driving people because the new, because GIS is now becoming a hot degree program around a lot of universities. They're not, every university isn't doing it, but there are a lot that are. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the universities and go to the professors and offer them, you know, the program for them to be trained on it to, so that they can start integrating into their classrooms. Mm -hmm. Now, when those students graduate, there's a built-in demand. So give his son a free copy. <laughs> I know, I think I was saying that too. <laughs> Actually, I see that Jim was having a question. Sorry, if I jump. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you know. um, I see the product launch plan, yeah. social media, mailing list, website. What I don't see are goals. Whenever you go to a conference or you set up social media, you got to know why you're spending your time on that particular thing. Set up goals, and so when you go to the utility conference in Atlanta next week, you know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You social media—that's really big. What are you going to do in that? You got to have specific layouts and plans and goals. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. That's my recommendation. No, it's excellent. Thank you. Write it down. Yes. John, I'm, I'm just a simple fisherman, but I mean, you, you know, I, I think there's lots of, I'm hearing lots of really, really great directions for you all. Um, the ones that really kind of jumped out at me were one, one possibly partnering and two, your existing clients. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed, I mean, within that, within, from a pricing standpoint, within, you're kind of moving over into an app community and all, all of the drive right there now is, you know, it's software development, give it away. And then uh, once people are using it, then you start charging a, a monthly per diem for, for each user that's using it. And, it. and this, I mean, it's something that, that I, I know it will be used from a standpoint of if you look around and you talk about GIS and GPS, the, the, you know, there's, there's people that are like, I've never heard of it before. I'm fortunate I used to work in that world. That's the only reason I even know what you're talking about, you know, because I wouldn't have gotten a lot of your acronyms. I wouldn't have known who Esri was. Had I not spent some time there before I uh, escaped to uh, to go out and fish, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, 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 there's an application there too. But I, we're not going to use that. I don't like fish brain doing what they do. But anyway, but in, anyway, uh, the if you look at, if you look at just you know what what is you know what is your low hanging fruit that you can automatically get involved with and the people you can partner with. Stay within Esri because I, I mean they they are lion share and it's easy once you once you've proven and actually start generating revenue, then you can build out. I mean you know to other areas. I think that's yeah, that's my advice. Yeah, and and that's our idea. We I have some 
big plans that we could do with it, you know, maybe get to the point where a user can come in and configure these stories themselves. So they don't need to need us and you don't need to figure out the questions, but yeah, that's going to take some money. Sure. <laughs> so that was our last question. Let's give them a round of applause. asking the questions. Yes, thank you. You know, um, this is uh, this is tough to do, especially, you know, a product that you've been working on day and night uh, in, in a room somewhere, you know, <laughs> trying to bring this thing to life. And so to have a team of individuals like this to be able to help you out is tremendous. Yes. And I want to just thank you and uh, intending for using us as a platform to help your dreams come true. So thank you very much. Here's a token of appreciation. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, do you want to take a picture of those? No, I'm recording you. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Fantastic feedback. Thank you, everybody, for engaging. Uh, what's going to happen next? We're going to pass our index cards to the middle. And as you're doing that, think about who else could benefit from this. Our upcoming presenters, Sterling Brooks, yay! Uh, we're excited to have it. I've added imagery so you'll get a sense of who are these companies that are coming, what are they doing. So if you want unique handcrafted gifts for the holiday season, please make sure you come next week. So that December 23rd, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, I'm behind. Um, <laughs> the audience is coming the week after that. They work on getting feedback and data, very cool organization. We have presentations scheduled for the middle of December, and we have applicants um, actually in the pipeline after that. So if you're interested in presenting, the timeline now is really around January, okay. unless you um, are really nice to us and give us lots of flattery because we can't, we can't accept gifts, but flattery works. Um, so anyways, we will see you next week. Uh, last thing is if anybody has events, we can share um, and give that update. Jen, Rosemary. what's the event that's big for us next I will month? come back to that in a minute. <laughs> Rosemary. Uh, so two things. First of all, I want to thank this entire community for being so supportive of gravity. We've presented, we've given you guys an update, we're powering the organizing committee. A lot of love for us, I appreciate that. If you want to know more about what we do, I'm hosting a webinar Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, today's Wednesday, Friday at noon, half an hour of your time. Um, and we are raising capital, so if you want to uh, get in at the ground floor, I will leave some information about where you can learn more about it in the back by the coffee or stop and see me. Um, if you want to sign up for the webinar, let me know and I'll send you the link. Thank you so much. Thank you. So November 13th is our next One Million Cups get together at Chima from 6 to 9. Um, it's on us. We just want to bring together the business community where we're not grilling our presenters with questions. We can all get together though and just get to know each other as well. Um, so look for an event right on that. John? So this evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, we have our monthly startup social. So this month's theme is startups journey. So we're going to have a panel of CEOs and founders. We're going to talk about their um, the struggles and, and the challenges and the success they had um, uh, as they uh, build their business. So it will be a fantastic event, 6 p.m. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Last one, Tana. So December 14th, mark your calendars. Uh, I need you. I need your support. We're having a veteran business pop-up shop in Manassas. Um, we're featuring veteran owned businesses that have a product or a service, something that you can use as far as buying uh, gifts from your for your family. Um, on December 14th, between 10 and 5 p.m. at Manass in Manassas at Jeronics Coffee House. Um, I also put the information. Uh, I'll make sure that it's on one million cups so you can sign up for it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything but your time and you know, just you patronizing these great heroes. And if you know a veteran who has a business, can they just send them your way? Absolutely. To be a vendor there? Right now we have nine vendors, but we have space for 19. So if you know a veteran business owner that has a product that you would love to buy during the Christmas time, please send them my way. Thank you. All right, Russell. 
I'll just do two. Um, this afternoon from 12 to 1, I'm hosting uh, my training workshop at the Mason Enterprise Center. You know, small businesses, entrepreneurs uh, need help with uh, their branding and their visual identity. I'll be teaching that this afternoon. And then tomorrow at Patriots Pub and Grill from 5.30 to 7.30, we're having a business, the Central Fairfax Chamber is having a business mix and mingle networking event. Um, includes two drink tickets uh, and costumes are optional. I plan on dressing up. As what? As, uh, you'll find out. <laughs> you have to come to the event. Uh, so one thing with regards to our event next month, yes. there are sponsorships available, and the more sponsors we have, the more food we'll be able to have at the event for hors d'oeuvres and appetizers and stuff like that. So if anybody's interested in being a sponsor, please reach out to me or to Jen or to Donnell. Yeah, and uh, let us know that you're interested, and that way we can get you on the list so that you can be a sponsor and be acknowledged both before the event and after the event. More details on the event? We will put it up on event parts today so you can see it. Uh, it'll be Chima and Tyson's, on. 6 to 9 on November 13th. Thank you. So thank you very much. Again, if you know a business owner, they can apply on WilliamCups.com forward slash Fairfax. You guys were awesome today. Have a fabulous rest of the week. I hope this gave you a good creative brain break and some inspiration to go do your own thing as well. See you next week. <laughs>